Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. Now I'm going to do another installment to the amplifier build project. I wanted to put up some other content, just not have all of the videos being about the amplifier, kind of spread it out a little bit. But, you know, I don't really have any good subjects now, so I'll go ahead and uh, do another installment. Well, you would think I would move ahead into the next stage of the amplifier. Of course, we did the input stage and got that done. Next would be the voltage amplification stage, followed by the output stage. Well, the next installment I would do would be the output stage. The reason being the voltage amplification stage is set up based on the output stage. So really I could have done the amplifier going backwards through each stage. You can think of each stage as a building block. The uh, input stage is a little more independent, so you know it doesn't matter as much as the order where that comes in. What I'm going to do after this power supply video is we'll move on to the output stage and then work backwards to the voltage amplification stage. Now, you would think I would do that next, but I need to order some parts to build up a circuit to do that. So what I'm going to do is get the power supply part of this design out of the way. I should also mention, if I get to the point that I make this a kit, uh, the power supply is not going to be part of that kit. You know, it has to deal with expensive parts, bulky uh, transformers, you know, large filter capacitors. That's up to you to build that part. I'm only going to supply the boards and, you know, maybe the components. Okay, so let's talk about the power supply for the amplifier project. We need to know the voltage of the transformer, the current or also the volt amps, it's just the volts times the current. It's not really watts in this case because we're dealing with alternating current and the impedance, so they call that volt amps. So we need to know what value of transformer we're going to need, and then we can build out a power supply. Now, I want to keep it simple. I see a lot of designs where they really go overboard. You know, they have pie networks and snubber networks in the supply. I, I just don't see that as being necessary. I don't think it's going to improve the sound quality any. The amplifier itself, besides needing the supply voltage and current, it's pretty insensitive to the noise and things on the supplies. It's called supply rejection ratio and it's uh, pretty high in these global negative feedback type amplifiers that have high open loop gain. Now I made a video about selecting a transformer for audio amplifiers and I'll put a link to that one. It does cover some other things. I don't want to rehash all of that. I'll just kind of gloss over some of that real quick. And one thing is supply voltage. I decided my amplifier is going to be around 50 watts into an 8 ohm load. And that's actually going to vary. We might end up with a 60 watt amplifier. It just depends on the available um, supply voltages for transformers. And I, you know, looking around, I find we're kind of limited there. So if I do the math, you know, 50 watts into 8 ohms, you could just take 50 times 8, you get you 400, and you take the square root of that, which is 20. We need a 20 volt RMS signal into 8 ohm loads to generate 50 watts. But I need to know the peak, so I need to multiply that by the square root of 2. So we need uh, about 28.3 volts peak to get our 50 watts into 8 ohm loads. Now because of losses in the amplifier, the amplifier is not going to be able to swing all the way to the supply rails. So we need to select a higher voltage than that yet for our supply rails. And with an 8 ohm load it's probably going to be around 5 volts or so. And it's going to be in the neighborhood of 33 plus or minus 33 volts. Now looking around at transformer values, if you look hard enough you can probably find 
uh, a voltage you want. But I want to select a transformer that's available to everyone who wants to buy one. You know, there's certain values you need. And, and that's going to be a 50 volt center tapped or maybe a um, 48 volt center tapped. In other words, uh, from the center tap to each side, you'll have 25 volts or 24 volts. Of course, the transformer across its secondaries will have the full voltage rating. And by the way, you'll see transformers rated this way. They'll have 50 volt CT, meaning center tapped. So from on each side of the center tap, you'll have 25 volts on one side and 25 volts on the other. Uh, sometimes you'll see transformer secondaries. They'll be split in their own isolated secondaries. You can join them in the middle to make a center tapped secondary. Sometimes they'll show those as 25 plus 25. And another way they show center tap transformers is 25-0-25. They're just using the center tap as the common and each side would have 25 on it relative to the center tapped common point. Okay, that's all great, cheerful, and wonderful. What about the current rating of the transformer or in other words another way to look at it is the volt amps rating uh, volt amps is just the uh, volts times the current rating of the transformer so we can look at a few scenarios here you know like I said this amplifier is going to be rated around 50 watts into 8 ohm loads and if you are going to use it that way, in other words, you will never hook up a 4 ohm load to the amplifier, what transformer value would you use? Well, a Class AB amplifier putting out 50 watts continuous, you know, that's the maximum clean power into the load, it's going to take about 80 watts from the supply. But, you know, the nature of music is not always going to draw that much. You could use a 50 volt amp transformer but to me that's kind of cutting it thin I would go with a uh, 70 or 80 volt amp transformer or if you want to go with more of a stronger supply you could just take the 50 watt output multiply it by two you know that's my criteria so you would need a 100 volt amp transformer uh, what would the current be well 100 divided by the voltage is 2 amps. So a 50 volt center tapped 2 amp transformer. Now some people go beyond that even, but yeah, I think doubling it is plenty. Okay, so let's look at another scenario where you're going to use two of the amplifier boards for stereo sound. So you have two 50 watt channels. You know, that's 100 watts and you can double that and use a 200 volt amp transformer. Again, you don't have to use such a large transformer. You can back that off to maybe 150 volt amps. Now this amplifier I'm designing is going to be able to handle 4 ohm loads, so you have that option as well. And if you use a 50 volt center tap transformer, you'll be able to get decent amount of power from this amplifier but it really depends on the current rating of the transformer. You'll be able to get in the neighborhood of 75 to 100 watts with 4 ohm loads. So if you're going to use the amplifier with 4 ohm loads, you're going to want to use at least a uh, 150 volt amp or maybe even a 200 volt amp transformer. That just depends on the continuous average power output you want to get from the amplifier. And if you want to use a stereo amplifier with 4 ohm loads, uh, you'll want to look at doubling those values again. And the third scenario is if you want to bridge the amplifiers. You have two boards, you want to bridge them together. And when you bridge the amplifier, you double the uh, output voltage swing, which in a given impedance will double the current. And because each amplifier is seeing half the impedance because of that, doubled current you can only use the amplifier with 8 ohm loads in bridged mode so you could see you know close to 200 watts it would probably be more like 150 to 180 watts 
bridged into an 8 ohm load. So you're looking at 360 or even 400 volt amp transformer. Now as you get into larger and larger transformer, the uh, load regulation is much better. Uh, like I mentioned in the other video, it's you know, smaller transformers, it could be around 10% depends a lot on the type of transformer and these larger transformers have better load regulation so you could back off a little bit and go maybe 300 volt amps now that we have the transformer selected we can look at the supply and you know keep it simple I don't think you really need to go overboard for an audio amplifier and use you know, all the extra components just a decent supply is all you need. Keep it simple. So over here you have your mains connections. You have your line and neutral. On the line side we have a fuse and you know the value of that's going to depend on you know how many uh, amplifiers you're driving, you know the loads you're going to use. And then you'll have a power switch from there you'll have a capacitor that's the across the line type so you know they're the safety type you don't have to go into any extravagant filtering and it's really unnecessary for this purpose you can even get away with not using any capacitor but I think it would be beneficial just to have uh, a capacitor across the line and of course we have our transformer and then we have the full wave bridge rectifier I would select a beefy uh, 25 amp type rated like 200 volts. You know those type have the little mounting hole in the center so you can bolt it right up to the chassis. That just makes it easier to you know mount and dissipate any heat. Next we have the capacitors. I would recommend using smaller values and uh, putting them in parallel as opposed to using one larger one. You might think that would improve the ESR or equivalent series resistance. Actually, that doesn't really help. You know, if you take several smaller values, that would equal one large capacitor. The ESR would come out about the same whether you use the smaller ones or just one large capacitor. What really benefits you in using multiple smaller capacitors is the handling of the ripple current. The trend in today's capacitors is to make them smaller and if you use one large capacitor it's probably going to be a lot smaller than they used to make them. That smaller size has less surface area and if you're really pushing your amplifiers or you know just putting a heavier load on this power supply those capacitors can heat up. So if you use two or more smaller capacitors that would equal the larger one in capacitance you're actually spreading the ripple current across the smaller capacitors and perhaps the some of the smaller capacitors surface area would be more than the one larger capacitor and they wouldn't get as hot now these components I'm showing in dotted lines are not really necessary like I'm showing a film cap well the amplifier boards are gonna have onboard film decoupling caps because you really have to have those very close to the components in the circuit to ensure that the amp is stable so it's not really much of a point having them here in the supply now I'm showing these bleed off resistors here that will discharge the capacitors when you you know cut the power to the circuit normally you don't need them when the uh, power supply is in the same case as the amplifier boards because the amplifier boards uh, bias currents will bleed off the voltage here. If you're just going to build this power supply and you know use it on the bench to play around with amplifier circuits, if you don't bleed off those capacitors you might get bit, get a nice shock. You know at the higher voltages here you're, you're talking about 80 volts across the uh, power supply rails here from you know positive to minus so it would be very beneficial to bleed off that charge in that case okay to wrap up this video I'm going to set up a basic power supply to take some measurements I have two types of transformers I have the standard EI core type and the toroid 
I would recommend the toroid it's better performance in many cases however unfortunately this does not have enough output voltage for my purposes this one actually has too much but I can put this on the variac and lower its output voltage by adjusting the input voltage so we'll go ahead and take a look at this transformer well, before settling on that other transformer, I decided to go look in my box of transformers I have. And imagine my good fortune when I found this one. With this one, I don't have to use a Variac. It puts out 50 volts and it has a center tap. And here I'm testing it without a load and we're getting 55 volts. So at load, it probably puts out 50 volts. So that'll be perfect for testing my amplifier with not sure of the volt amp rating it to me it looks like it's over a hundred but maybe not 150 It's probably a 125 or something in that neighborhood let me hook it up to a rectifier and some filter capacitors and we'll measure the unloaded output voltage okay so I set up a little power supply on the breadboard full wave bridge and the two filter caps now this is not what I would actually use. I just set this up quickly for demonstration on the breadboard here. So I hooked up the meter on the DC side. We have it set for DC volts. And we'll measure the open load voltage. And nothing. Up. Oh, my bad. I forgot to twibulate the doobly-doo. There we go. Look at that, 74 volts. So that would be 37 volts per side. So we have plus and minus 37 volt rails. And of course, when we load that down, that voltage will drop. So it will be interesting to see how this transformer will support the amplifier. I talked a little bit about the load regulation and dynamic power in my transformer video which will be linked like I said I don't want to rehash everything I said in that video so you might want to take a look at that well that'll wrap it up for the power supply segment of the audio amplifier build appreciate everyone watching I really appreciate the patreon supporters we'll catch you on the next video and thanks for watching